Hi, it's Karen with RT Systems. It's Thursday night and we're going to talk about tones. We're going to talk about CTCSS and DCS tones and how the radio uses them, how you set them up in the radio, and what you can expect for the performance once you do get it set up. Now, let me warn you, this video is going to be a little long. So if you want to pause me now and go get a cup of coffee or a soda so you can sit back and relax and listen, I'm going to lay out a lot of good information here that you'll have a chance to watch and watch again and really get some good use out of that radio instead of being so frustrated because you and your friends can't hear each other. So I'll wait here while you run and get it. Let's start with a little history of tones. We're going to start with some older Yezu radios because they've just been around for a long time and we've been working with them for a long time and I'm familiar with them. There's three good reasons to start there. This is the 8800. Yes, it is out of the line but it gives me what I want to show you about tones. Notice I have tone, I have TSQL, which is tone squelch, and I have DCS, which is digital tones. Really simple. There are three of them there. That's it. When I come into the FTM 400, here I have tone, I have Tone Squelch, I have DCS, look familiar, I have Reverse CTCSS, User CTCSS, Pager, Decode, TDCS, and D-Tone. Oh my goodness gracious, what do I do with all of these? I'm going to explain them all one at the time. Notice I have one CTCSS column and I have one DCS column. I have a user CTCSS. This is not what you think it is. You do not get to customize it to exactly what you want it to be. It has a different function. Believe me, for hitting a repeater, you're going to be using CTCSS and DCS. In tone mode, what we do for you is if you set it to tone DCS, I'm sorry, CTCSS becomes active. You then pick your tone frequency. It's designed that way because then you can't set up the frequency without turning on the function. This is the light bulb in the lamp. This is the switch that turns it on. There's one. Some of your other radios can do two. I've got one here. This happens to be the PowerWorks DB750. And notice I have a CTCSS and I have an RX CTCSS. RX for receive. Receive implies that your radio is receiving it. CTCSS is going out. Receive CTCSS is coming in. And I can set them independently. This is not something of the amateur world. This is something of the commercial world that has come back into amateur just a little bit but not much at all. Again, in this one, if I just pick tone, notice just CTCSS is active. Doesn't matter what I set there. It, the radio's not using it. This is a bulb and it is off. If I turn the switch on, it uses it. We're going to direct you to the field you need to set. One more thing you need to know is ICOM radios do this differently. Let's take the 208. Notice I have a CTCSS and I have an RX CTCSS. 
and you think, oh, wow, great, I can do split tones. Mm, maybe on some of the newest ones. Tone, Tone Squelch, and DCS, my only choices. If I pick Tone Squelch, notice CTCSS is no longer active. It's grayed out. RxCTCSS is active. This tone is both transmitted and received during tone squelch. So we're back to one tone doing both jobs, both the transmission and the reception, both allowing you into the repeater and keeping your radio quiet until that tone comes back from the repeater. But it's one tone, not two. Okay, now I say some of the new ones will do it differently. Let's look at the ID51. That's a new one. That's a popular one. In this one, let's go to tone mode. Tone, tone squelch, T squelch reverse. They call it DTCS for DCS. It's the same thing. This is this is reversed. That means your radio has it on and won't open until it receives a signal that has it. Decode TDCS and split tone. And when I pick split tone, notice both of these are active. Okay, we're going to direct you to what you need to do next. And if something is inactive, well, it's in the radio's brain. If you were to turn to DCS on the radio on that option in the menu, you're going to see 023. That's why we leave it there. So you have a one-to-one -one from the radio to the what you see on the screen. But it isn't active. The radio's not using it. The switch isn't turned on. So... Let's take a few minutes and talk about what all these tone modes do. The tone modes you see in the radio start with tone. Tone transmits an analog CTCSS tone to the repeater so you can transmit through that repeater. It's your calling card. It opens the door for your signal and then you're heard by others on that repeater. Tone is the right setting for a vast majority of repeaters. If you're not sure, try Tone. But remember, you have to turn on Tone and you have to set the correct CTCSS value for the two of them to work together. Next, there's Tone Squelch. Tone Squelch transmits an analog CTCSS tone to the repeater and makes your radio like the repeater in that it will not hear a signal unless that signal carries the correct CTCSS tone. Boy, that was technical, wasn't it? Basically, what it boils down to is that if you set tone squelch when you don't need it, you will hear nothing coming back from the repeater. Your friends may call you on the phone and say, we can hear you, why aren't you coming back to us? Because you're not hearing them. You may see a signal on the front of the radio, but you can't hear it, and that's what Tone Squelch is doing. Now we have DCS. DCS is a digital code. This is not digital as in Fusion or D-Star. Those use other options in the radio if they do use a tone. Right now, tones are not widely used on those systems, so we're not going to worry about it at this point. DCS transmits a digital code to the repeater so you can work through that machine and blocks incoming calls to your radio just like Tone Squelch, but it's just doing it di with a digital code. This is a system from the commercial world. 
and it's used to separate customers from each other on the same machine. A very few amateur repeaters use DCS tones. However, it's here, it's available in your amateur radio if you do run into a repeater that has it. Next, there's decode. This is just like tone, but it uses a digital code, not an analog frequency. In this mode, your radio transmits to the repeater to allow access for your signal, but there's no tone blocking anything coming back into you, so you hear everything. This is where the amateur world and the commercial world differ greatly. Commercial repeaters are generally set up for DCS and pass the tone both ways. It's the way they can put a lot of people on the same frequency and keep them separated. So when you are asking for information, if somebody tells you that their repeater has DCS, be sure to ask, is it just a tone in or is it toned both ways? So you know whether to use DCS or decode to use the repeater properly. Now we'll investigate two mixed modes for tones. TDCS and D tone. The T stands for tone. The D stands for DCS. The one that comes first transmits to the repeater. The one that comes second is on your radio blocking incoming signals. So TDCS uses analog to transmit digital to block signals. D tone uses digital to transmit and analog to block signals. I have never seen this in use on an amateur repeater, but that's not to say it won't happen. These two mixed modes were the first attempt by the radio companies to give split tones, to give the ability to work within some of the commercial systems. And that's where they came from and you'll see them on lots of different radios. It's there if you need it. And the last one in the simple group is split tone. That's what we call it is split tone, but this is one CTCSS tone going to the repeater and a different one coming from the repeater. This is coming directly out of the commercial world, but it is being used some these days in the amateur world so if somebody's giving you tones for a repeater, make sure you ask enough questions. Does it come and go? Is it the same tone going in both directions? So you can be sure to set your radio up right. Remember, a lot of amateur radios don't do this. A lot of the newer models do, but if you get back even two or three years, you're going to find radios that don't. So be sure to ask enough questions if this is something that you know you need for your application. That was a lot of technical information tonight. A lot for you to think about. I hope you learned a little more about your radio tonight and about some of the terms that you see when you're programming it. Tones are widely used in the amateur world. They work real well as long as they're set up right. And that's what we're here for, is to try to make it easy for you to set them up so you get the most use out of your radio, so that you can actually enjoy it. What I'll do for you next week is I'll set up a couple of radios, and I'll film the radios and show you how they talk to each other, how the tones affect them, and how you can troubleshoot, how you can know what you might have done wrong when you're trying to hit a repeater. So that's for next week. It's Karen, K0RTX. We'll see you then.